We have shown you the unboxing and we have shown you how to install it. But in today's video, we're going to take a look at how well the Intel Arc A770 performs in games. Have Intel done a good enough job of this discrete graphics card? There's only one way to find out. So we have now had the Intel Arc A770 16 gigabyte for just over a week. And it's actually been quite a bit of a fun ride. As far as the card goes, it is absolutely brilliantly well made. It's really solid. Everything is pretty much there. They've got a lot of cool features on there that even other graphics card manufacturers miss. Things like the backplate being in this black steel. That actually looks really super cool inside a system. But has it actually been worth the cost of £400 that we paid for it? Now here in the UK, there isn't that many options that you can go for. These limited edition or reference models are only available from one retailer and they weren't even available from launch. Actually, they took a couple of days to come in stock and first up was the A750. Now we didn't go for the A750 because the price difference here in the UK between that and the highest one that they do, the A770, wasn't really that much. So we waited a few more days and then we managed to pick this one up. Now for £400, you are getting a graphics card that is really well made and it kind of is on par with more of your 3060 Ti, specifically at the moment due to its immature driver sets. As far as the card goes in specifications, you're looking at getting 32X cores, eight render slices and 32 ray tracing units. It has a graphics clock of 2100 megahertz, a 225 watt TDP and a PCI Express configuration of up to PCI Express 4.0 times 16. Now that puts it in a class of its own, specifically when it comes to some of the Radeon cards, which don't work that well with PCI Gen 3.0. This will actually work perfectly fine in it and it's supported throughout. Now, along with those specifications, the A770 LE model does come with RGB lighting and 16 gigabytes of RAM. They generally actually do two or three different models of these. You've got the A750, you've got the A770 8 gigabyte, and then you have the limited edition 16 gigabytes, and that's the one we actually picked up. Now our experience with this card so far has had its ups and downs. We had a few issues when installing it, particularly when it came to actually getting a display through HDMI, which we mentioned in one of our previous videos. But we've managed to resolve that now by just simply using a DP port or using a DP to HDMI adapter just to get it running through our capture card. And we had a lot of fun trying to get it benchmarked. There were a lot of different quirks with this. We weren't sure which version of drivers to use. There are beta versions out there. There are non-beta versions out there. But I think we actually came to a good conclusion with what we tested. So let's take a look at some of the benchmarks that we did, because obviously that's why you're here. And we'll show you how well it actually performed. The system we benchmarked this in wasn't actually our normal benchmarking system, which has a Ryzen 5600G. In the end, we tried it in our normal gaming rig, the one that this is actually going to go and live in after. And that's actually an Intel system. So the CPU for that system was an Intel i5-10400F. It's not the greatest CPU, but it's more than enough for this card. And 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Now through the testing, we didn't really see much of an issue with the rest of the system, but there were some quirks with this and we'll talk about them after. So let's take a look at some benchmarks.
Now for those tests, we actually used the Intel Arc Beta Driver. It's not the latest one because another one actually came out just as we finished our testing. So there may be some improvements there if you're going to go and do this now. But as you can see from the results, the card actually did pretty much as we expected. All the tests that we ran were with rebar on and we'll talk about what happens when you turn it off later. But you can see that even in 1080p, you can pretty much pull over 60 frames per second in all the games that we did with some just slightly suffering on their 1% lows. The interesting piece came when we actually increased it up to 1440p, where in 1440p, we still actually got above 60 frames per second in all the games, but this card seemed to just like 1440p much better. I was actually quite surprised that there wasn't a bigger difference between these benchmarks, but it kind of shows that even though the 1% lows did take a bit of a dip in 1440p, the overall average FPS of the games actually made them reasonably playable. The one game that was actually a bit of a standout in this was Horizon Zero Dawn, which just gave us plenty of issues as we were going along. What we do when we tend to benchmark is we will run the inbuilt benchmarks of the games first, just to see what the card can kind of come up with, and then we'll do some manual testing afterwards. When we were running the built-in benchmark for Horizon Zero Dawn, it didn't matter what settings we used, we'd barely been able to struggle to try and even get over 55 frames per second. And that was the same in 1440p or 1080p, low or high settings. We don't know what was going wrong with that benchmark, but once we actually started hitting the manual tests, the game run perfectly fine, giving us a great difference between the 1080p results and the 1440p results. We did have similar issues with Cyberpunk 2077. The built-in benchmark was getting a lot less than you would actually get while playing the game. So we actually took a combination of both and we put them out there. I'm sure there's probably going to be some kind of fix for that going through within the drivers of the card because they're still kind of mature in this stuff. So we're not going to look into that too much at the moment. So as far as the results go that we got for that benchmarking, this card actually performed really well, or at least as much as expected that we thought. We didn't expect any more than that because we were kind of expecting 3060 Ti kind of levels maybe, but because the drivers are still immature and this is still their first graphics card and they're still getting everything sorted on it, it wasn't actually that bad all round. Now we didn't test any game that didn't support DirectX 12 or Vulkan. We'll probably do another video on that, so make sure you subscribe if you want to be able to catch that. But one thing that we did test was actually disabling rebar in the BIOS of the motherboard. We wanted to see what actual difference it would make when you're running it on a new platform to an old one. And the results were quite interesting. With rebar off, this card is actually a totally different card. It is pretty much a tear down from which level. So if you are going to run this card for gaming, make sure you turn rebar on. If you don't actually have it, I'd probably avoid getting this card altogether. Okay, so what do we actually think of the card? As far as the card go, I think Intel have done a fantastic job, particularly when it comes to the design and the build quality of the unit. It is probably one of the best looking cards out there and it's completely solid and I don't think you're going to get any issues with the build at all. I've not actually seen any reports of any kind of hardware failures on these. It all seems to be on the software side. And that brings us to our recommendation. Should you actually buy one of these cards now? If you are like us and you want to actually tinker with things and see how they mature over time, particularly if you have a YouTube channel like this, then yeah, you should probably go pick one up and you'll be able to go and live with it along its journey of maturing as we go. I do believe and I feel from the testing that we've done that this card has a lot more potential in it and I'm hoping that Intel will unlock it from a driver perspective soon. But if you are looking for something that is out of the box performance, for this price, you can actually pretty much pick yourself up now something like an RX 6700, and that would be a far better option to do. They are much more mature. They will support a lot more kind of games because obviously these have an issue when you play games that are older than DirectX 12, and they will generally make a better investment now. But that brings us to the end of our look at the Intel Arc A770. We're very impressed with it so far, and we're going to keep our journey going by seeing how far it will go over time. Let us know in the comments below if you're thinking about getting one of these, and if so, when are you going to pick it up? Are you going to look at being an early adopter too, or are you going to wait for it to mature a little bit? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, and we'll catch you in the next one.